Hi, so my name's uh, Paul Clough uh, and I work in the University of Sheffield in the Information School where I'm Professor of Search and Analytics. Um, one of the things, or some of the things I've helped to do uh, are develop the data science programmes, both the master's programme that we run and the new BSc programme. As well as uh, being at the University of Sheffield, I also work as a data scientist for a company called Peak Indicators, um, where I've been helping develop their data science capability. Uh, so I guess I have a, a couple of perspectives on data science, uh, both one in the classroom, uh, but also in practice as well, actually doing data science as a data profession. So what is data science? Um, I think that's quite a hard uh, question to answer, and that's partly because there are many different perspectives on views uh, on what data science actually is. But my particular uh, view would be that data science uh, is a set of activities process that enables us to gain insight uh, from data. We might also uh, uh, use data science to automate decisions as well, maybe in the case of, say, a recommender system. Um, but the science in data science really is very much that kind of systematic a methodical um, sort of process of gaining insight from data. So data science can be used for many different purposes. Um, we see data science being used a lot in business, um, perhaps for uh, activities like supporting decision making, perhaps building recommender systems to help personalise and tailor products. Um, but also data science is being used a lot for social good. Uh, for example, AI is being used uh, to help, um, for example, uh, identify uh, vulnerable people, uh, maybe risk to people. Uh, that's being done by local authorities, by local government. Uh, we've seen, for example, the use of things like precision farming, uh, the use of AI uh, analytics uh, being used in farming, particularly in regions and countries uh, where the farming is difficult. Uh, and AI uh, analytics can make a massive impact. Uh, for example, could help uh, optimise the yield output, uh, could help identify uh, various kind of pests uh, and so on. Um, so data science is very much being used there. We see data science being used a lot in areas like healthcare. Uh, so data science has been used to help develop the vaccines uh, for COVID-19, but also data science was used, uh, for example, to identify groups at risk from COVID-19. Uh, as well as uh, also being used, for example, to know where to kind of resource and where to um, sort of put um, kind of uh, activities during the pandemic. Uh, we also uh, see data science being used a lot uh, as well, for example, in governments, being used a lot by charities. Uh, so, for example, the UN have Global Pulse, which is an initiative that brings together big data, uh, AI, data science, analytics where they're developing all kinds of applications, technologies that are helping people, um, you know, for the greater good. So, um, like any kind of uh, technology, like any kind of process, um, data science can be used for good uh, and is being used for good. Of course, uh, what can also happen is that uh, it can also be used uh, for, for you know, harm as well. Uh, and we've seen a number of cases where data science and particularly AI and algorithms uh, have ended up um, harming people or having effects that perhaps the developers or designers never imagined. And it's not to say that um, the harm, the impact was deliberate by any means, maybe of the people designing those algorithms. It is just uh, the way that those algorithms have developed, uh, the data that they've been trained on. What's happened is that the inequalities uh, within the data, within those human systems and processes that are creating the data have ended up kind of coming uh, through the algorithm into the output and actually perpetuating themselves as well. Uh, so perhaps some examples could be, we've seen cases where um, Amazon, for example, had a, um, a, a, a job uh, search uh, tool or a kind of a CV filtering tool. Uh, they trained it on lots of uh, past CVs uh, to try and work out you know, who would be good candidates for their jobs. What happened in the end is that because uh, the, uh, the, the algorithm was trained on mainly um, male uh, CVs, uh, it ended up discriminating females and women were not considered uh, for the jobs. Uh, we've also seen other cases where, for example, Google had a, a system that was showing ads for jobs to, to people uh, and the types of jobs that were shown and the opportunities to men and women were actually different to the point where women were actually unfairly um, kind of, you know, uh, prejudiced against. Um, we've also seen cases, so we had the A-level, uh, the, um, the GCSE exam, uh, shall we say, fiasco. Um, where you know the algorithm, algorithm was kind of biased uh, and it was affecting um, the results uh, for students or the, uh, the, the, the given grades. 
Um, we've also seen cases in policing, for example, particularly the use of predictive analytics, uh, where certain groups have been discriminated against. Um, so we've seen all kinds of uh, biases that can occur um, from uh, data science and AI. There's also a whole uh, bunch of other aspects too. So uh, there's some researchers have created this tool called Data Hazards, which highlights a whole different risks of kind of hazards. And that includes some of the ones I've just mentioned, but also things like um, the sustainability of AI as well. So some of these algorithms, some of these particularly deep learning methods require huge computing power. And they're gonna drain, they're gonna put a drain on uh, the planet, they're gonna put a drain on resources. So we have to think about using those in a responsible way. Uh, there's also issues around privacy, there's issues uh, around uh, data leakage, uh, around governing the data as well. All of these form part of how data, data science, AI analytics could harm people. Well, I think data science is very much being applied not only in the commercial world, in business, perhaps also in the kind of charitable uh, world as well. Um, data science is also being used uh, in uh, academia as well, in research, for all kinds of different purposes. So you've got data science very much as a, uh, as a data profession um, where you can go and apply uh, data science to kind of you know, various problems. But we've also got data science as an area of research as well. So being able to kind of uh, build new algorithms, uh, build new ways of analysing data, particularly as we, we're coming up with increasingly different types of data. It's not just numeric anymore, but data today can be social media, it can be images, it can be video, audio, uh, and the whole process of data science or the goal is to extract insight and trying to do that in all these different types of um, kind of data sources, trying to do it in real time as well, uh, trying to do it in ways uh, that we can explain uh, that's going to require a new generation of scientists. I, th I think the world is very much your oyster in the sense of that any job today uh, likely has some kind of use of data or data element. Many, many jobs are wanting to be evidence-led rather than making decisions by gut feeling alone. They want to base those decisions upon data, upon evidence. So I think you know, with the, the types of skills that you are going to develop during a data science degree, um, it definitely puts you uh, in a good position for any type of job. However, there are specific jobs where having data intensive skills, so analytics, being able to use machine learning and so on, they're going to open up a lot more doors as well. So it might be the type of job you could end up doing might be a data analyst type of role, uh, perhaps focusing a little bit more advanced analytics, the use of machine learning, those types of algorithms. You might become a data scientist. Um, there's, there's definitely a whole career and pathway opportunity that's available for that. Uh, you might do more of a kind of visualization uh, type of uh, kind of job, but you also might go into things like policy. So nowadays, governing AI, governing data, ethics, and so on, these are really important jobs that are particularly um, pertinent in areas like local and central government. So I think uh, as uh, the uh, UK um, the new data, the national data strategy, one of the points that it made there, one of the things that it said is that, you know, uh, we're very much in this kind of age of data uh, and those data skills are highly important, not just at work, but actually engaging with, you know, your everyday life as well. So I think the skills you develop, the hard skills, the technical skills, but also importantly, all those soft skills as well, being able to think critically, being able to think about ethical implications of using data and AI, um, those team working skills, importantly the communication skills. There's no good just having insights if they don't go anywhere. Those are also uh, going to be super important. So I think um, the data science programme at Sheffield in many ways is similar to other data science courses. You will cover some of the basics uh, around things like um, statistical methods, uh, machine learning, being able to manage data, query databases, uh, thinking about ethical issues, uh, thinking about the use of AI. Um, but unlike um, other courses, I think um, the data science at Sheffield in the information school is also quite unique. And I think that's partly because we very much have a focus on areas such as ethics, on the responsible use of data and analytics and AI, uh, and the context of use as well. Not just the context of use, also the context of generating the data, managing the data, analysing the data, uh, and presenting the data as well. 
So I think that gives you a much broader um, perspective on data science, which we know a lot of uh, businesses and industries are looking for beyond just the purely technical capabilities and skills. Uh, there's also uh, a kind of an area that's emerging at the moment called the role of data translator. And that is very much this idea of somebody, somebody be, who is familiar with the kind of technical skills, but also familiar with the usage as well. So maybe in a business in a particular area and being able to kind of translate between both of them. And that's not just the kind of vocabulary, you know, that, that kind of translating the language. It's very much translation uh, of the culture as well. So understanding the culture of business, understanding the culture of technology and bringing those two together to help kind of tackle um, problems in organisations and beyond. Um, I think also as well, um, data science is very much traditionally rooted in the statistics and the computer science disciplines, but there is an emerging growth uh, and, or, or, and need to understand data science in a broader sense, particularly the kind of social um, perspectives as well. And that's what uh, a data science course such as the one that we're offering uh, would uh, give you. So the data science course that we offer uh, will cover a, a number of fundamental topics and that might include things like statistics, programming and so on. Um, but to come onto the course you don't necessarily have to have uh, an A-level in statistics. Um, in fact, you know, we're trying to create a course that anybody uh, would be able to um, uh, come onto um, because we recognise that you know, the career options for data scientists are way beyond just maybe computer science and statistical jobs. Um, however, I would say that you need to be analytically minded and you definitely need to enjoy playing with data because you're going to be doing a lot of that.